Hello my YouTube fam. Firstly, I want to apologize for the lack of videos lately. There was meant to be one last Sunday, unfortunately that didn't happen. I simply ran out of time and then I wanted to get one pushed out by midweek and that failed as well. Something came up and I just couldn't get it out. So we're back on the regular schedule. I'll be posting a video today, obviously the one you're seeing, and then there'll be a new one on Sunday. I will be away on that Sunday, but I will make sure one gets put out. So over this past week, the reason why I've been so busy is I've kind of been revamping and rethinking how I freelance and how I can better my business model in a way. So I thought what better topic than to do how to freelance and give you a few tips about how you can start freelancing or if you're thinking of moving into freelancing what you should think about beforehand obviously i'm no expert in the matter so take everything with a grain of salt do your own research before you make any decisions about your financial position whether you would like to go freelance at all just really think about it beforehand so how to be a freelance filmmaker it's bloody hard the first thing i want to talk about is when to quit your day job I've been working in the camera department for going on six years now. Now, most of those years were actually spent being a camera assistant on TV commercials and on TV drama, things like that, features, short films, music videos. And gathering that base knowledge as a freelancer, I was able to start to move into full-time freelancing, just freelancing, instead of doing, you know, a day job or or having multiple jobs at the same time as well as freelancing. And that all happened just recently. So it took me six years to get to the point where I could even fathom just doing freelancing. Prior to that, financially, it just wasn't viable. It really is hard to make the decision to jump to full-time freelancing. It really isn't for everybody and it takes a long time to sort of work out if it's right for you. I found if you're in a day job at the moment and you wanna break into full-time freelancing, you can think of it as two questions. Number one is how much have I earned this year just by freelancing? And number two is, is my freelancing work taking over my day job? Freelancing work can ebb and flow, but you've really got to think about realistically how much you're making in a year and whether you can actually survive off that money. Now, I often found myself in the dilemma of my day job is getting in the way of my freelance work. So I would be working my day job and then a freelance gig would come up and I wouldn't be able to take it because I've already committed to the day job. That's kind of why I would recommend finding something that has flexibility so that you can go away and do a freelance job or alternatively find something vaguely in the industry that you're after. That way you've still got your toes dipped in there but you've still got some sort of stable income. For myself, when I started film, I was working a day job at an office and this started really well. It was good. My management understood my job and my role. They understood that I was doing freelance at the same time as working with them. So it was kind of flexible in a way. I could still find people to cover shifts if needed. But then management changed and my new manager didn't like that I was doing freelance and it was taking me away from working in the office even though I was a casual anyway and I wasn't tied to very much commitment to that business. Anyway, he just didn't like my availability to the point of effectively firing me via phone call without saying you're fired. Yeah, it was great. But in all honesty, I was very glad to be able to get out of there there's no real reason to trap yourself in something like that. If you're not enjoying it and you're not feeling welcome there, there's no point in staying. Luckily though, I was able to score some work at a local camera rental house and that got me by and actually got the ball rolling even faster to get into the film industry. And because it was a related job, I managed to make as many contacts as I could. I was able to go away and do freelance work and nothing interfered with each other. So it was a great job to have because it balanced my freelance work with a stable income. And then after that, I was able to easily transition out of that and into full-time freelance work. The second point I wanna make is cold calling and emailing. Don't be afraid to speak with other people in the industry. You'd be surprised how open and willing people are to talk about their role and how they manage to get there. I mean, you've got to take some basic things into account though. Don't spam anyone, don't repeatedly send emails, and don't be demanding. 
just be polite. You gotta try to keep in touch with people that you would like to work with or like to work under. You may have to do a few free jobs to gain their trust, but to maintain that connection with them means you'll be the first thing in their mind when they're looking for somebody to work with on the next job. That was probably the shortest point of all of my points in this video. Number three is finding work. There are a few different ways that you can find work, but you gotta be prepared to put in the effort. Websites, I could make a whole video on websites and you know what, I probably will. It is the best idea to make a website that outlines your work, your folio, as well as a contact page so that people can easily get in touch with you about working on projects. Enough said. You could join online communities, things like The Right Fit, which is a subscription service and they post jobs quite often. You could also find Facebook groups, which are free to join, and you could find work that way. There's many, many options for you out there now, especially in social media. And if it is a subscription service, you might not be locked in. I'm not sure about all of them, but in most cases, you can pay monthly and then cancel any time. The best one, is self-promotion and that is through a business page on Facebook or Instagram. You can promote your posts, pay a little bit of money, get it pushed out to multiple people. Multiple people will see your content, but you just have to make sure you maintain those pages. This is the way I tend to promote myself because Facebook and Instagram are both very visual platforms and I'm able to post show real content, I'm able to post stills from different projects that I'm working on, and I'm able to keep people up to date with the newest projects that I'm working on. It's very important to make sure you maintain your feed and keep it consistent in quality. And it is very important to make sure it is easy for clients to find your contact details and get in touch with you. Finally, number four, the boringest part that nobody ever talks about, keeping track of your income and paperwork. This point will be a little bit vague compared to the others, simply because it is based off so many factors. A common question that I found is, how much should I charge? And I found that the best way around this is to speak to established people in the industry. So yes, exactly like I was saying before, take somebody out for a coffee and sit them down, have a chat. You can ask them what they charge for a half day, for a full day, whether they charge with gear, without gear, what they charge for those, whether they charge a travel allowance. That way you're also not undercutting anybody and you're kind of working in the system. Next, you need to look at invoicing and accounting. Now I'm gonna get accounting out of the way because it's the easiest one and it has the most factors to it that could probably be spoken about for a very long time get an accountant. That's it, it's just the easiest way to sort things out. And I would recommend if you're looking for an accountant, you would be looking for somebody who understands your job. There is nothing more disheartening than going into a tax office and getting an accountant, sitting down with them, only for them to say, mm, I don't really understand what your job title is. Right, now that that's done, invoicing. This is still information you could get while talking to industry professionals, but you could also find templates for invoices online. You will have to modify these though according to your job so that it has all the relevant information on it. I personally like to use accounting software. I find that this really helps in keeping track of my invoices, but also those apps tend to allow me to log car travel details. It also allows me to keep a track of my business income overall. And I'm also able to lodge receipts. So yeah, it keeps everything nice and neat. Anyway, I think I've blabbed on well long enough about freelancing and how to freelance. But at the same time, I feel like I could blab on a little bit more. There is a lot to be said about freelancing and a lot of it is case by case basis, but I feel like I might make this video into a series and sort of break down everything that we spoke about in here. If there's something specific in this video that maybe you found interesting or you would like to know more about, let me know in the comments below and I'd be happy to have a look into it and make a new video on that. But I'm sure that most of you have probably left this video now and you've gone on to something a little bit more interesting. But for those whose eyes haven't glazed over, Thank you so much for watching. I'm glad you stuck through to the end. Again, if you have any questions, leave them below in the comments. And if you would like to see more content like this and would like to see more of my face, please remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you next Sunday.